As we all learned on the school playground, the Super Mario Bros. 3 manual clearly states that for any game to be considered fun and or eligible for a Game of the Year award, it must be an overbloated mess of unrefined core mechanics with an endless amount of filler side activities and minigames, lasting a minimum of 100 hours with a huge explorable empty open world. And so it's understandable that completing a game these days can be a time-consuming and confusing endeavour. At face value, completing a game is such a simple thing. You play the game, work your way through it, beat the final boss, and when the credits roll, that's the game completed. You've done it hundreds if not thousands of times. But it feels like games have become so much deeper and more complex than that broad definition could ever really capture. If I could use a glitch or exploit to reach the credits without fighting a single enemy, would that count as completing the game? It's not like a movie, where unless you get up and leave halfway through, everyone that watches it has the exact same experience, and once the bad guy is dead and the credits roll, you can all compare notes from the same basis. The interactivity and meaningful choices that pervade even the oldest and most basic of games will mean that every single person that plays it will have a slightly different experience depending on who they are. I've recently been playing a little unknown indie gem called Elden Ring, and for once I somehow have managed to trick someone I know into playing it too. He finished the game three times in the same amount of time it took me to beat it once, and I was blown away by how fast he'd went through it. But it was in this that I realised just how separate our experiences can be. Even though he spent more time playing the game overall, and has much more familiarity with the main bosses, there are bosses and weapons, and many dungeons, some of which contain the most memorable parts of the game for me, which he has never been to or seen. Which one of us has completed the game more? So if seeing the end credits isn't a definitive way to complete a game, what else do we have? Well, I think most people will agree that it's fair to say that anyone that has achieved 100% completion in a game, beaten every boss, gotten every collectible and done every side quest has, in fact, completed it. But then comes the immediate problem that anyone with even a vague idea about what it actually takes to 100% most games is never going to want to put themselves through the hellish torment that comes with that title. Not only is what actually constitutes 100% up for debate, but games have become so massively filled with shit to do and items to collect, that even in the best titles doing everything there is can be a complete tedious chore that keeps going way beyond the point any sane individual would want to stop. Like, as much as it might be an interesting idea, does anyone really want to play the clunky poorly explained tower defense minigame in Final Fantasy VII? Or destroy a million green birds. It just feels like on the whole the shit that goes beyond the main story is mediocre at best and is created solely to pad out a game's length and waste the precious time we have on this earth before our inevitable death and decomposition. Coinciding with the 100% status is the fabled Platinum Trophy, which is a much more rigidly defined and widely celebrated achievement that has been curated and chosen as a testament of true completion by the actual designers of the game themselves, and also they're a complete fucking mess. Beyond being the gaming equivalent of hanging your university degree on the front door of your house, it feels like the Platinum Trophy especially was just invented to suck all life and hope from the souls of people that love games. There are so many absolutely brilliant games that have ridiculous Platinum Trophies, Alongside understandable trophies for beating bosses or reaching certain points of the story are inexplicable trophies that go even beyond 100%ing a game, like trophies linked to multiplayer achievements or trophies for speedrunning the game, or trophies for beating the game back to back 9 times in a row with every character because you hate yourself. On the other side of the spectrum are almost satirical platinums like Undertale, which in a game where multiple playthroughs can be so vastly different and important, can be achieved without even beating the final boss once. Although you will have to spend around an hour dognating all your money to Toby one coin at a time. It's clear that none of these measures truly capture what it is to complete a game, and there are so many exceptions to the rule that it really depends on the game in question. Even if you go for seeing the end credits as a minimum requirement of completing a game no matter how much you've missed, Something like Nier Automata, 
where there are 26 unique endings and one of them can be achieved by dying in the first mission of the game, completely destroys that idea. Even if you play the game properly, you have to see the credits 4 times before you can see the true ending. Games have such an incredible depth to them that sometimes I actually feel like it's impossible for anyone to truly complete them. Completing something is an experience, and to experience everything a game has to offer, and be as familiar with it as it's possible to be, can go beyond even the playing of them. I think about the Souls games, and how it's possible to complete them and yet have little to no understanding about anything that's happening, and at the same time you may have never picked up a controller, but have a total understanding of their stories and characters, and have experienced the game more completely on an entirely different level than just a mechanical one. I also think about speedrunners, and how in their valiant insane efforts to finish a game as quickly as possible, like an exam student scrambling to finish the problems on an exam until the last moments before the chime, they must spend more time playing their chosen game than pretty much anyone else on the planet. There are people that dive into a game's code and uncover cut content and hidden secrets and experience firsthand parts of a game that are impossibilities to the average person. And finally, you have the designers of the game themselves, and when you think about it, the only people that have truly experienced everything a game has to offer, and understand every aspect of it, are the people that brought it into existence. And even then, if the team is big enough, there might be certain aspects designers have very little awareness of. We have reached a point of absurdity, and when I'm trying to argue that only a solo developer can truly have a complete experience of a game, I feel like there is a fundamental flaw in the concept of completing a game itself. The problem is that complete is such a discrete term, you either have completed something or you haven't, but even though that means reaching the end credits for most people, it fails to capture that the requirements for completing something are subjective rather than objective. I guess the point I'm trying to get across here, and the conclusion I came to myself, is that as much as it might seem like a developer is setting a series of tasks for you, and it's up to you to complete them, you're actually the one that decides what tasks you want to take on, and as master of your own life you are the one that decides when you're finished with the game. Complete is such an imprecise word when it comes to describing games, and it will never be able to capture the individual and unique experiences and journeys we each go on during our time with them. Thank you to my cousin for playing Elden Ring like a madman and inspiring this video. Thank you to Yoko Taro for changing how I feel about endings forever. And of course, thank you for watching. Peace. God, complete doesn't even sound like a real word anymore.